First, you'll be locked out of your phone and your personal computer. Your cameras and smart home devices will no longer be under your control. Your electricity will be turned off. Your bank accounts will be drained. And before you can do anything about it, all traces of your identity will be erased. And then things will get really scary. This isn't some crazy conspiracy theory about something that may happen in the distant future. This past week, OpenAI proved that these events could very well happen in just a few months from right now. Today, we're going to discuss the who, what, when, where, why, and how of all of this so that you can be better prepared. Welcome back. Or if this is your first time checking out one of my videos, hey, it's great to have you here. I'm Josh Rosenberg, the AI guy. Unless you've been following the still developing soap opera that's been going on at OpenAI as closely as I have, you probably don't realize just how scary things are about to get. In this video, we're going to get into all of that so that you can truly understand the magnitude of what's currently happening and what is going to happen. But before we get into all of that, do me a favor, hit that like button and click subscribe so you never miss an AI related story, update, tip, technique, or tactic that you can use to help grow your business. All right. So there's been a lot going on the past week and I've spoken about it for at least four hours in various videos and different places, but here's the real quick 10 second TLDR. So we have three main players. We've got Sam, Greg, and Ilya, three of the founders of OpenAI. Ilya, along with the rest of the board at OpenAI, got Sam and Greg fired, saying that they've been dishonest, or rather they got Sam fired, saying that he's been dishonest on numerous occasions. Greg decided to leave too. Microsoft was furious because they are the number one investor in OpenAI. They own 49% of it, and they were never told any of this. They were never consulted with. They had no idea. They were blindsided, just like all of us. So they offered Sam Altman and Greg positions as the heads of AI over at Microsoft. Then within a day, 500 or so of the slightly over 700 employees all said, either Ilya and the rest of the board goes, or we do. Microsoft said, hey, we're happy to take all of you, bring everybody, all 700 of you. And right when that deal seemed like it was going to be finalized, OpenAI or ChatGPT rather was down for about an hour. During that one hour, of downtime, it was clear that there was no way open AI could continue to operate and that chat would never work again in the current state. So Ilya and the board were kicked out. Sam was reinstated. He's got a more secure position now. Greg came back, all the employees stayed. So it was really a, a bumpy roller coaster. But at the end, things went back to pretty much normal. Then you have all these journalists from places like Reuters, which are, are, are very reliable and consistent coming out and saying that they think what Ilya is referring to saying that Sam Altman had not been very honest is that they've created QSTAR and that's a huge deal. And the way that they proved this was they showed the AI a math equation that it had never seen before and it had no problem solving this. Now that doesn't sound like a big deal, but it really is. See, AI is good at predicting the next word you're going to use in a sentence because it understands and it's trained on human psychology and the human mind and how we like to think. Math is not how most people think. It's not trained on it. If you were to upload, let's just say your child wants to learn their, do their math homework and you upload the equations, it can figure it out and I'll give you the right answer, but it's referencing other instances of those equations being on the internet. So let's say it's the nines times tables. That's an easy enough Google search to find. So that's what it's referencing. But by taking an equation that had never been created before, there's no point of reference. So when it was able to solve this equation incredibly fast, like within a second, and it had no point of reference, and it was disconnected from the majority of the internet, that was a real bad sign. The reason being is that everything that our lives revolve around has high levels of encryption built into it. All of our passwords, our two-factor authentications, our everything that we do that secures us, whether you're using a VPN or not, 
there's levels of encryption that protect us from getting all this information stolen. And if OpenAI had actually reached QSTAR and it's able to figure out these equations, give them just a little bit of time to develop. And I'm talking weeks to develop. Think about all of the hackers out there and nefarious people that would be able to break into all of your equipment, all of your secured accounts, and clean you out in seconds. Sell all of your information on the black market. Take all the money from your bank accounts. Change your wills. Anything where there's not a physical paper trail, they can make your life miserable. And even if there is, it's going to be happening to such a massive amount of people so rapidly that there's no way you'd be able to protect yourself. If you try to go before a judge, the courts will be backed up for years. If you try to talk to your bank or your insurance company, they're going to be backed up for years. So no matter how secure you think you are, your, your personal information, all of your stuff, your very life, your identity that's held at a place like the DMV could just be gone and sold and done with, and there's nothing that you can do about it. But that's not really the scary part just yet. It gets worse. So in order to understand QSTAR, you have to understand A-STAR. A-STAR is how we as humans think, all right? It's about putting an order of operations in place. It's about figuring out the path to the, the easiest way to go about accomplishing a task. The simplest way to think about this is to think about somewhere that you drive to or go to on a regular basis. Let's say the supermarket and it's 10 minutes away, the path that you go to the supermarket every day. And if you've lived somewhere for long enough and you've gone to the same supermarket for long enough, you'll know alternative routes. So let's say you're going to the supermarket like you always do and the street is blocked off because there's construction. You know that, okay, I can take the next street over or I could take the freeway. Maybe you are, you're on the highway or driving and you could take a different exit. One of the lanes is closed off and this is causing traffic that'll back you up for about an hour. You could take the side street. There are different ways that you could go about getting to the supermarket. And the more familiar you are with the neighborhood and how to do this, the more options you're going to have. Your first choice is, oh, look, there's an accident or there's some construction going on and I have to choose a different route. You're going to choose the easiest route. What is the most logical? What's going to get you there the fastest and simplest? If that one happens to be blocked off, then you choose the next easiest and so on until you get to the supermarket or you turn back and go home and decide you're going to go there tomorrow. So that's how we all think. And that's how AI has always worked. When you ask it to do something, it's going to figure out the easiest way to accomplish that task, followed by the next easiest and the next easiest, if there happens to be some kind of roadblocks in the way preventing it from accomplishing the goal. After it's done and you close out that conversation at ChatGPT or whatever learn language model you're using, it forgets. There's no restored memory. That's very similar to how you and I work. Just because all the different paths to get to the supermarket doesn't mean I know those same paths to get to your supermarket. So I don't have that same knowledge as you and vice versa. And so that's how a star AI has worked. Well, QSTAR actually has more of a hive mind mentality. It shares the information, it keeps memory of all of these different paths. So now when it's asked to go to the supermarket, every other QSTAR based AI in the world will also know that same information and it trains each other. It teaches each other and everything learns in real time, which means it begins developing answers to equations that it was never asked to do. It finds the simplest way to accomplish things, whether it was ever asked to or not. This is the technology that all of these science fiction movies like Terminator are based on, where eventually it gets to the point where it is quicker for the computer to learn without human interference, without your eye asking it to do anything or telling it what we need done. It has its plan and it teaches itself that you and I become hindrances. This is what the Terminator showed us. This is what every science fiction movie pretty much always has warned us of. And this is what the precipice is that we're looking at with the start of QSTAR. So right now, 
it is answering just a simple math equation on a fourth grade level or so, which doesn't seem that scary. But you can see how the next step is if QSTAR gets out to the general public, if this is released out into the wild, it is not going to take very long for some truly bad people to do horrible things that are going to ruin our lives. And it'll probably be a year, two years after that, that we start having computers that look at us as a hindrance. And this is where things get really bad. So this is what we need legislation for in order to prevent QSTAR from actually making it into the wild or being developed, being open source, having other parts of it enter the world. Do you think politicians are going to be jumping all over the place to try and prevent this? One of the members of the board of OpenAI was partially responsible for the economic and technological crash of 2008. He, short, he shorted it, meaning he made an absolute fortune when the rest of the country and the rest of the world was suffering back then. He stands to gain a ton of money. And his stance is that if he doesn't capitalize on this, somebody else will. It's going to happen. So why not make all the money while I still can? Because people are going to suffer. He's going to kick the can down the road and just say that nothing bad is happening. Nothing's going to happen. He's going to downplay it and wait, because he's the more that this goes on, the more money he seems to make. And guess what? He's also a politician. Things are about to get really scary. And this is why you need to be prepared. And I wish I had some magical solution or some sponsorship deal of some VPN or whatnot that can protect you from this. But quite frankly, nobody has that. The best thing that you can do is pay attention to what's going on in the news. Subscribe to this channel so I can break it down for you. I really want to know, what do you think? What are your opinions? What are you doing to prepare, if anything at all? Am I crazy and did I go off the deep end? Or do you think that some of this stuff could very well happen? Let me know down in the comments. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's better that you're aware of this now than... It comes back to bite you later on and you're completely unprepared. There might be a, a time where there's warnings that you need to take your money out of the bank and have it in cash or some other way to pay yourself. So just be aware of that now. All right. So with that cheerful message out of the way, uh, that's going to be all for today. Remember to check out smartaiventures.com if you want help automating your business making a higher revenue with less work, less overhead, less expenses, and faster turnaround times. Till then, I'm Josh Rosenberg. I'll see you later.